Hello, in today's video we are covering transistors. This will be a very brief introduction to transistors. There are two basic types of transistors, the PNP and NPN, which are basically the way the transistor is formed using P-type and N-type semiconductor material. I won't go into too much detail to what these semiconductor materials are, but just so you're aware of that. Here is a drawing of these transistors, of their symbols, so this is the PNP, this is NPN. You can see there's an arrow here, and there's an arrow there. So you notice the difference in between as well when they're switched. Although these letters won't be on the symbols. So as you can see the transistor has three legs and these are the emitter, the collector and the base. Oh, so this would be the base, emitter and collector for the PNP. What's the difference you might ask? An NPN transistor has a P-type semiconductor squished in between two n-type semiconductors, hence giving form to the NPN. And whilst the PNP transistor is the opposite, it has a p-type semiconductor squishing in between a n-type semiconductor, giving rise to the PNP. These are bipolar transistors, bipolar junction transistors, sorry, or BJT for short. I would also like to make you aware of something called field effect transistor, or FAT. Here is a drawing of a P-channel one and an N-channel one. So for the FATs, we have the, we have the gate, the source, and the drain. And by applying a voltage to the gate, so by applying, applying a voltage to the gate, we are able to control the flow of current from the source to the drain. So we won't dive too deep into the transistors, as I just want to give you an overview, make you aware of them. These transistors all work in a similar way. I'll talk a bit about the ways of operation. So just to let, just to remind you, if we apply a voltage here at the gate, we will be able to control the flow of current from source to drain. For and these are FETs, field effect transistors. Going back to the BJTs, so if you remember. Bipolar junction transistor or PJT for short. These are current regulating devices and can be controlled by the basic transistor. So as opposed to the FETs, these are current controlled. So by using a small current flowing through the base here, we can control a much larger current going through here, through the collector to the emitter for NPN or emitter to the collector for the PNP. Which is much very useful. So when we have a current flowing to the base of the transistor, let's take this as I B, put a red arrow there. So we're using the NPN one as an example. And if the transistor is conducting current, the current flowing to the collector IC increases as well. So this is current flowing to here, coming out of here. This is going to get substantially larger. So if IB increases, I see also increase. I'm rising a slant here. Let me write that for you. Right over here. So IB increases. I see also increases. We can control small amount of current to control large amount of current. And the opposite will occur if we do the same. So if we decrease it, if we decrease IP, IC will also decrease. So this current flowing through here will decrease if we decrease this base current. Because of this relationship, we can also use these transistors as current amplifiers or switches. And I will show you this later in Multisim, this, this relationship and what it does. I will now move on to the operations of the transistor. So the transistor has three standard modes of operation. One, when VBE, so voltage base to emitter, is less than 0.7 volts, the transistor is off. 
it is more or less acting as an open switch. So when our base of the transistor, let's take this as, a, um, as an example. If this is, if this base here is less than 0 0.7 volts, no current will flow. It's more or less acting as an open switch. Though when VB, so this is our second mode, when VB is more than 0 0.7 volts, we have a small amount of base current and our transistor is partially on. So let's say we are, so we have more than 0 0.7, more than, and our transistor is partially on. Let's say partially. Since IC is directly proportional to IB, it gets some current gain, which is HFE. So these transistors always have a gain, you will find it in the data sheets, which is HFE, which is equates to so we have HFE, this is our current gain. And this is equal to IC over IB. Our transistor is functioning as a current amplifier. But note, please do note, do not design circuits with regards to HSV as this can, this can, this value can change uh, with a variety of factors, maybe temperature, time, whatever. This value can change, so it is, you know, just don't design with the, with this value. My or your circuits just you'll be forever betting on like, oh, I hope my my transistor reaches this this value, so my circuit will work. Do not include, do not keep design with this uh, as your primary focus, as what I'm trying to say is, it's okay, it's bad, it's bad practice, essentially. And lastly, the transistor is saturated, and we have more than 0 0.7 volts at VVE with increased amount of current IV. We gain the max amount of collective current and the transistor acting as a closed switch. So, I'll talk about saturation in a minute. We have when we have more than 0 0.7 volts, uh, we, and then, you know we have the max amount of current at IV. This is the max amount we put. Even how much more we put, it won't change a thing. This is the max amount that our collective current. Like, this is the max amount our collective current will, will do, will pass through, and this is acting as a closed switch. So this is letting all the collective as much as it can through. It doesn't matter how much more we pump through in it. It's letting in as much as possible already. I said before something about saturation. When the transistor is saturated, and you might hear this term a lot, but when the transistor is saturated, in this case, we can think of it as maxing out and taking the uppermost limit of our transistor. When a transistor is saturated, its base emitter and base collector are forward biased. So this is allowing con uh, current to conduct. It's like, as like a diode from a forward bias allowing con current to conduct, reverse bias will not allowing anything. Voltage drop from collector to emitter is near zero. And as we remember the main, we can use a small amount of current to control a large amount of current. Since we can say that I C, so our I, so the current I collector is larger than I B. So of course the collector current can be larger than the base current, and then that allows us to say that the emitter equals I B plus I C. Emitter. This friend. And now that you understood the, what I meant by saturation, you know, we, as much current as we push through that base, so it doesn't matter how much we jam through that base, you know, once it's reached its saturation, 
It won't let any more fun. There will be a peak. It will not do any more. This is it's essentially acting as a closed circuit. That's essentially what it's doing. This is how we can use a transistor as a switch. So, less than 0.7 volts, it's acting as an open switch. Open. And if we put more than 0.7 volts, we're putting into saturation, it's acting as a closed switch. I've got this circuit here just to illustrate on how we can use a small amount of current to control a large amount of current. And as you can see here, we have a 5 volt power, we have power supports, a battery connected to two LEDs. And we have our NPN transistor right over there. The current probe is currently blocking the big battery here to electricity to current. So now we have another LED here. So what I wanted to illustrate is, you know, I'm changing, this is a very low use of potentiometer. And I'm changing it. And you can see our LED, our LED one, is, it's going out sideways. You can see the current decreasing as I increase the resistance until it's very lit and it's just gone and I will decrease it and you can see it's starting to get there it's increasing it's increasing it's increasing but as you can see here you know these two are these two are following that when I increase the resistance there's a decrease in current and when I decrease the resistance, there's increase in current. But look how small that current is compared to this one. This is my heart, that's milliamps. This is barely anything. This is, you know, compared to this. And if I put it down to zero, yeah, so put it down to zero, 5k to 20, you could barely see that's that's coming on. And you can see that's that's bright. 18.964 milliamps flowing, so I only 671 microamps flowing. So you can see the transistor has a lot of potential uses for for what we can control, and not just that. Imagine, imagine what you could do with this. So, you know, hopefully in the future, in the future we're going to talk about Arduino's and different microcontrollers. But you know, let's talk about an ESP8266 a microcontroller. No MCU. I think it's it is. I don't know what's that name for it. <sighs> but you know, we we can have this. We can have it, one of its pins connected up this to a transistor. We can drive a, a much larger current load through here. We can attach it to a relay, to a relay or something. You know, we can use that relay to unlock something, to lock something. You know, we can have multiple switches. You know, it's. There are some good potential for this. You know, we can use the transistor as a as you've been using as a switch here. Also, these transistors so it can be used in current amplifiers, and hopefully, one of the projects we'll be able to do in the future is just a basic, just a basic signal amplifier. You know, a speaker and a, and a microphone or music music amplifier. You know, just just to get just to get more of that practical experience. But but yes, as you can see the transistor does have a wide variety of uses and they are very commonly used and nowadays. I mean your phone has millions or billions of them in, you know, they're so small nowadays. And this is probably one of the greatest inventions known to man. So I'll leave you with that. Hopefully you've learned something.